So that's what we're going to be looking about, looking at. Are there studies that show what kind of contaminants are on floors even after they've been cleaned? But let's start with the definition of clean. You can go on and on about this. If you've seen ISSA, they have a new series of video with Howie Mandel that approached this, what is the definition of clean? And they're fun and entertaining videos about what is really clean. Just in the May-June issue of Clean Facts, uh, Dr. Skinner uh, and, and another expert wrote about this and back and forth on, you know, what's the interaction of indoor air quality and floors? So this is not a new subject, but it certainly was resurrected or brought back to the forefront during the COVID-19 epidemic. But we have to go back to our friend, Dr. Michael Berry. For those of you who've been in the industry for a while, you know and remember Dr. Berry. Dr. Berry is happily retired now, living in the mountains, having a good time. But when he was working for the United States Environmental Protection Agency, he and some of his associates got deeply involved in looking at the interaction of floors and health, the health of the indoor environment. And these are definitions that came from his groundbreaking book, Clean is an Environmental Condition Free of Unwanted Matter. There's substances of three forms, solids, liquids, and gases. Pollution is unwanted matter that gets in the way of human endeavors poses a risk or causes an undesirable effect. In other words, soil is not just dirt. If the soil is causing problems, poses a risk or could have an undesirable effect, we need to get it out of there. And then cleaning is the management process to a use, use to achieve the clean condition. Effective cleaning is the process of extracting and removing unwanted matter to the optimum extent to reduce exposure to unwanted matter. In other words, extracting and removing unwanted matter. That's Dr. Berry's definition of cleaning. In an article he wrote at, after his retirement in 2017, it specifically focused on carpet cleaning. He reiterated that his definition of what cleaning was. And he said a high performance carpet cleaning process that focuses on nine steps using a wet, high temperature, high flow extraction, high extraction system. That's what he talked about. And then he summarized some of the studies that we're gonna look at today. He summarized in this chart where they showed what the effect of hot water extraction was on eliminating things that you don't want pollens and other allergen, fungal matter, uh, bacteria, germs, and fecal matter. All of those were things that they measured for. During these studies in this process that Dr. Berry went through is really when the use of heat in carpet cleaning became a bigger and bigger issue. For those who've been cleaning carpets since hot water extraction was invented back in the 60s, they had a basic understanding that hot water cleaned faster and dried faster and did a better job. They experienced that in their own life if they're cleaning the dishes or whatever else, but there wasn't a lot of, uh, there wasn't a lot of science around. Well, now we know that even key concept, concepts from a middle school chemistry training program reinforced the idea that heat helps get a deeper clean. It adds energy, to the process, which increases molecular motion. And if you look at the very last sentence on this point, since different substances are made from different atoms, ions, or molecules, increased temperature will affect their dissolving to different extents. We know that the value of heat has been measured and has been applied in our industry. And explaining it away is fine, but don't come somehow say that it's superior not to use heat because we know that from a pure cleaning standpoint, from a health improvement standpoint, the hotter water is better. So if you look at Dr. Berry's description combined with what you ever do every day, 
It's wet, a water-based system, a high temperature, 145 to 160 degrees Fahrenheit across the surface being cleaned. That's not what's on your temperature gauge on your truck mount. That's across the surface being cleaned, high flow. That means greater than one gallon per minute. Doesn't have anything to do with PSI. It has everything to do with how much water you're moving through or across the surface. And then a high extraction system that can recover as much of that water as possible and safely store it. For those of you that have rotary jet extraction tools, you know that you get 650 passes at the soil versus two with a wand. So all of those things can affect clean deep, you know, can help us deep clean. So what are the benefits of deep cleaning? Well, number one, it's extraction and removal of unwanted matter, the sanitizing effect of hot cleaning solution, restoring confidence in the safety and healthfulness of their facility or home. This is a big one in marketing that I think most carpet cleaners overlook. Reassurance to family members, employees, customers, vendors, and all stakeholders about the investment that's being made and extending the life of the carpet investment, making it last longer. This isn't an argument about methods. This is a, this is a discussion about when do we have an environment that we know needs special care, okay? That we know has potentially hidden enemies, biological contaminants that exist on a carpet or a floor that look clean.